We're going to talk about nuclear reactions, which, as they sound like, are reactions that take place in the nucleus. So nuclear reactions are going to involve a change in an atom nucleus. So when we talk about the nucleus, I want you to remember what's in there, right? The protons and the neutrons are in there. So as part of nuclear reactions, energy or particles can be emitted from the nucleus. The nucleus sometimes can just break apart, especially in really, really big atoms. And so the energy of the particles released are called radiation. So radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of radiation. If we compare nuclear reactions and chemical reactions, we'll talk more in the year mostly about chemical reactions. And those reactions are going to involve the atom's electrons. The identity or the nucleus of those elements involved are unchanged. It's just going to be reactions with especially valence electrons. And, and chemical reactions are going to obey the law of conservation of mass. Nuclear reactions, on the other hand, involve what are called the atom's nucleons. And nucleons is just a collective term for what's in the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. Now, if we change the number of neutrons, not a big deal. That's what we do in isotopes. But if as a result of this, we change the number of protons, we're actually going to change the identity of the element. And that process is called transmutation. Mass, instead of being conserved, can be converted into energy. And that amount of energy can actually be calculated with Einstein's famous E equals mc squared equation. And the unstable nuclei are then going to lose energy in a process called radioactive decay. Over on the left-hand side of your notes, you have the two terms fission and fusion. The next two slides are going to walk you through a description of those as well as maybe some similarities and differences. So take some notes as it narrates along. Okay, firstly we're going to talk about Okay, nuclear firstly we're fission. going to talk about nuclear, nuclear fission, fission involves nuclear fission one involves that's going to one bombarded nucleus that's going to be bombarded typically, with a, bombarded, neutron, typically with a neutron split and it's going to actually split into two smaller nuclei. Nuclei, 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 nuclei being the plural term once you get that nucleus. split you're also going to have a couple of you're also going to have a couple of free neutrons that are going to come off and you're going to have a lot of energy that's going to be expelled as well. Now nuclear fission may have and have uh, been create. able to that's how we get uh, create. Our power from that's how we get our power from so nuclear that power plants. Some uranium so that involves some uranium that gets bombarded with a neutron and it splits, into, neutron, these and it splits into these smaller nuclei and creates energy that we can capture and then use power. for power. Okay, next we have nuclear fusion. Okay, next we have nuclear, nuclear fusion. fusion involves nuclear fusion involves two smaller nuclei, two smaller that, nuclei are that, are that are combined under an immense amount of pressure and energy in order to find one larger nuclei. And you're also going to get a lot of energy that's going to come off after that reaction. And you may get some Man has not neutrons. been able to Man has not been able to capture or create However, nuclear fusion. The sun However, and the, stars are the sun and the the stars are excellent examples um, of nuclear again, fusion. Thinking of the sun, um, again, he's an thinking of the sun, there's an immense amount of energy that's released, and that's how we feel the heat from the sun, as well as get light from the sun. As well as get light from the sun. Again, nuclear fusion, again, is the combining of two smaller nuclei to form one nucleus. larger nucleus. Looking at the main types of radiation that we want to study, we have alpha, beta, and gamma rays. And you may have heard of these before. And you may have talked about, hey, which one could be stopped by a piece of paper and which one can be stopped by a piece of aluminum foil. So alpha radiation is, uh, the symbol for it looks like this, 4, 2, and then this little alpha sign. But it's also equivalent to a helium nucleus. And so a lot of times you'll see alpha radiation depicted as the symbol for helium, and then two is the atomic number of helium, and four is the mass number for helium. And so helium has an atomic number of two, so it has two protons, and then 
a mass number of four, so there are two neutrons. So the composition of an alpha particle it are two protons and two neutrons. And an alpha particle can be stopped by paper. A beta particle, the symbol for a beta particle often looks like the symbol beta, and then it's a zero for mass, and it's a minus one. If you can see that, minus one. So think about what subatomic particle has a um, mass of zero and a charge of minus one. So the composition of a beta particle is actually an electron, even though that's not in the nucleus. And a beta particle can be stopped by aluminum foil. A gamma ray is actually interesting because the symbol for gamma is like this, and it's a zero and a zero. So there are no protons and there is no mass. And so the composition of a gamma particle is actually energy. And it's the highest energy. Um, so it's stopped by lead or concrete. And we're able to um, take an element if we know that it experiences alpha decay or it emits an alpha particle or it emits a beta particle or it emit, emits a gamma particle, we are able to write equations to figure out, hey, what are we going to end up with? And so, for instance, um, we have 231 and 91. Palladium. Palladium is radioactive, and when uh, palladium decays, it releases an alpha particle. And so, um, we start out with this palladium, and then one of our products is going to be an alpha particle. Well, however many we have on the left-hand side, we have to have the same number on the right-hand side. So we have 91. We have to have a total of 91 over on the right-hand side. We already have 2. So 91 minus 2 is 89. Now look at your periodic table and 89 protons determines the element's identity. So what element has an atomic number of 89? You should see that that is actinium. And what's the mass number for it? So if you're good at math, you should say, well, that would be 231 minus four. So that would be 227. So we could actually determine what element palladium would transmutate into if it released an alpha particle, which is really kind of cool. A beta particle, we're going to take something a little closer to home. We're going to take carbon-14, okay? Carbon-14 actually can release a beta particle. And so we, here we have our carbon-14. And one of our products is going to be a beta particle. Now, you, this is kind of interesting because notice this is a negative number. So our total, um, ch our total number over on the right-hand side on the bottom needs to be a 6 on the bottom. So um, I know that I would need 7 minus 1 to give me 6. My mass, though, 14. There's a zero, we don't have any, so we're gonna need a 14. Now, look at your periodic table. What element has an atomic number of seven? You should say that that one's nitrogen. So, carbon 14 will actually transmutate into nitrogen when it emits a beta particle. Gamma radiation usually accompanies either alpha or beta, because notice it is just energy. And so uranium is actually a good example of that. So uranium-238. And uranium-238, when it undergoes radioactive decay, it will release an alpha particle. It will also release gamma, ra gamma energy. And then we have to figure out what element it will transmutate into. Well, I usually start at the bottom. We have a 92 here, and we already have two. So we're gonna need 90 more. 
All right, look at your periodic table. What element has an atomic number of 90? You should say it's thorium, okay? And then, um, what's the mass of that? Well, my total amount of mass has to be 238. I have four already, and so this does not give me any mass in addition. So for 238, I need a total of 238, so this one will be a 234. Um, we are going to skip the last part of your notes on nuclear forces. That's, um, you're not required to know that and you won't be tested on that. If you take AP Chemistry, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, for our lecture today, we'll end with those nuclear equations. And then your homework is going to be practice writing nuclear equations. So you'll find that worksheet. Again, if you have questions, email me, text me, or 